Welcome to Plant Revelations and today I want to talk to you about box and specifically box tree caterpillar or box tree moth which is a real big problem and it could actually mean the end for box and box hedges as we know. Now Buxus sempervirens is a native plum and in recent years it's been attacked by these caterpillars which ferociously eat all the leaves off a plant they can they can sort of denudify a plant um, within a matter of weeks and because the moth will lay its eggs from March to November time this can happen several times a year and the plant loses all of its leaves its ability to make its own food and grow and the plant eventually dies of exhaustion so is this a real big problem yes it is it's going to probably change the landscape of some of the bigger formal gardens as we know it uh, i predict they'll have to rip out all of their box hedging it's something that's not been around here until the last sort of four or five years in nottingham derbyshire area but now i'm noticing it's spreading everywhere this is the little critter which is causing all the problems uh, these have most likely been imported by garden centres from holland and now they've pretty much spread throughout the UK. I think it's going to be impossible to stop them now, but what you can do is you can cough the individuals, remove them mechanically, which is basically just hand pick them off, which is feasible if you've only got a few small box balls. And that in conjunction with a pheromone trap should hopefully keep them at bay. Um, just here I want to show you what a healthy piece of box looks like. And over here, you can see what uh, damaged growth by the caterpillar looks like. Not to be confused with rust, which is orangey, or blight, which is just big patches of hedge which have died. Uh, they've still got their leaves intact or the leaves fall off with blight, whereas this you can see really lacy and yeah, it's quite devastating stuff really. Uh, how can you tackle it? Well, you, first of all, you could start by spraying with chemicals, but obviously. It's not good for our native pollinators. They're cancerous. It's not good for you spraying the chemicals. You're probably going to have to spray them every couple of weeks. And like I say, it's not good for birds, pollinators, any other insects really that are beneficial to us and I got. So I wouldn't advise that. Um, the other thing you can do is use something called uh, a, a moth trap. A pheromone moth trap that you can just see behind me up in the tree. Um, I don't know if you can zoom in on that hole. Just see up behind me at the tree, there's a, a little sort of plastic box there, and I think you can pick them up for like 30 quid or something. And they come with a couple of pheromone um, like capsule things that you pop in, refills, and it releases a pheromone that traps, I can't remember if it traps the male or the female moth. Um, and they're really effective. They'll be completely filled up with hundreds of moths, and they're really quite big moths. Um, but the important thing is you have to get them out early. Now it says put them out March, April, but we've had a mild year this year, and the moths have been active from February. So I would just keep them topped up all year round. But it is an expensive solution. The refills are probably going to cost you in the region of like. 30 to 50 quid a year to keep your box hedges so you've got to really like your box hedge the other thing apparently there's a nematode spray which of course is also expensive and you could spray that directly onto the caterpillars that are already on there um, but the pheromone traps are quite effective at breaking the life cycle however if you forget or you follow the instructions and you and you don't beat the race for the moths like this has happened this year then uh, they're not always effective. So in long term, you've got to be committed to keep <laughs> refilling them up. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so what's the other solution? Well, the other solution is to dig them out and try something alternative. Now there are, they used to say you could use something called a Jap Japanese box, which is Island's chronometer. But now they're saying it's a very expensive and a bit fiddly and doesn't like our wet climate. So you could try uh, things like Osmanthus, Sweet Box, which isn't actually related to Box, um, Lanissera natidia, 
Or here, we're thinking about replacing these edges with lavender head coat, which will only need cutting once a year, rather than a couple of times, like box. Um, so, so long as they're in a sunny, dry spot, they're pretty resistant to most diseases. They're going to produce lots of flowers, which will look nice. Uh, the evergreen silver foliage, and you just have to trim them straight after flowering, and that's that. So, sorry about the banging. So, I hope that's been useful for today, and um, you're not do too downhearted if you're losing your box because just see it as another planting opportunity. There's lots more interesting plants that you can use instead. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Like and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later. Bye.